Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here from Live and Let's Dice, and I want to make one thing very clear straight out of the gate. Steamforge games are utterly killing it at the moment. It seems that if you have a hot video game property and want it converted into a brilliant tabletop format, this is the team you go to. From the Dark Souls miniatures game to Resident Evil 2 to Devil May Cry and even a brand new announcement that a Monster Hunter and a Sea of Thieves game is on the way, it seems that Steamforge is the place to go if you want your digital compatriots it's turned into dice encounter experiences. And wouldn't you know it, all of my praise for this company seems to have actually paid off because they've sent me this. Well, technically they sent me the box as well. It's the Horizon Zero Dawn board game, and thanks to my long-suffering girlfriend Kerry and a lengthy solo play off this experience, I finally have enough ammo to take down this beast. So let's get started where all eyes are being drawn, the minis and tokens of this box. And it's time to sound like a broken record here, but once again, the team has knocked it out of the park. Despite the small scale of the Hunter models, each is packed with character, and the larger monsters present a real chunky design that complements the fact that these are machine-like animals. Now, if I'm being honest, I probably would have liked it if the models were a little bit bigger, because then you could add in even more detail, but then when you consider how big this package already is and how that would basically break your back trying to cart it Around, I understand that concessions have had to be made here. The tokens are also thick with two C's, making for game boards that can take a beating and won't buckle under pressure. And rounding out the quite literal pack here are the cards, which are made from some sort of material that Wizards of the Coast needs to take some lessons from because they feel like durable. You can flex them, you can bend them, and they don't actually like stay bent. And they've got this nice textured feeling. And I just, oh, I just like rubbing it all over my skin, which is probably a bit disconcerting for people I'm playing the game with. And trust me, they needed to make the cards as durable as possible because each player constructs a deck of cards which will then let them use items, make special attacks, or even dodge incoming fire. However, in comes the first twist of this game because much like Dark Souls the card game, which Steamforge also produced, the deck of cards that you have is your attacks, but also your health, meaning that if you run out, you become so fatigued that your hunter faints, and if enough of you faint, then it's game over. Luckily though, it's not as harsh as the Dark Souls miniatures game, wherein if a player dies, it's game over for the entire party. Here it's just like missing out on killing enemies to gain experience and treasure that will impact the player's standings come the close of the game. And I know what you're saying, Jules, oh, that's all well and good, but what do you actually do in this game? Well, let me tell you, my friend, because it is time to act like a total hunt uh, and try to take down as many big beasties as you can with up to three mates. You form small hunting parties or can go it alone and you go through little skirmishes and at the very end of the game you take on a big, large and encharged baddie. Now the game is played primarily in a semi-cooperative fashion where hunters work together but are each trying to score the biggest kill to be crowned the overall winner at the end of the game. But you can also play this cooperatively where it's just you and your friends bagging big boys together. Adding some wrinkles to the experience are the fact that as the group takes on different encounters, the previous best scorer will get to choose the map and the player that was in last place in the last round will get to choose an event. And that's basically a gameplay modifier that will put things in their favor so that they can climb up the ranks again quicker. Some of them are really good, as in like you can inflict just damage straight away or it will give the hunter in last place extra scrap so they get more resources to buy new stuff. But some of them, whew, they can cause a bit of a few tense moments, I'll tell you that much. Because as the point of this game is win at all costs, you can use these cards to screw over your pseudo teammates. Yet, if you don't fancy any of the bad vibes going on, you can, like I say, play the game in full co-op mode, but that does come with its own restrictions, which I'll detail later. Now, each hunter comes with their own strengths and weaknesses. Some are agile and can pack a punch from range, whereas others like to get into the fray and inflict status ailments on enemies to score the killing blow, even if the prey tries to flee. And because all of these characters have their own unique strengths and weaknesses, it creates a sort of dynamic which which is, I'll scratch your back if you don't stab me in mine, which can become truly palpable come the closing moments of this game. So that's the goal and the sumptuous style covered, but how does it all come together in practice? Well, after my testing period going solo and with a group of other hunters, I can say one thing assuredly, and that is that the mechanics on offer here are so liquid smooth, you'd swear that they were made out of melted butter. It's an incredibly well-paced and fast-moving affair with a really rewarding late-game twist as you all vie for the top spot. And I love the fact that you can level up your hunters and equip them with new gear and skills as this truly makes each playthrough feel unique. 
unique. Plus, switching from the close combat focused hunters to the long ranged ones in a different playthrough makes for thoroughly different experiences. By the end of my solo run at the game, my hunter was able to tank damage and return it in kind. But here's the interesting thing, when I tried the same tactics in a group setting, you know, build up a tanky character, I found that I was always too late to the fray because they were beating me there with more nimble moves or being able to slide in and steal the kill. And I thought to myself, ah, I'm going to have to play this differently now that there's other players. And I went from being a straight up tank to focusing more on traps and knockback, only inserting myself into the fray when I knew I could deliver the killing blow. And I know it's a bit of a weird thing to say, but some of the most tense moments of this experience were actually me doing nothing, just waiting and biding my time for all of the components of my Machiavellian plan to come together. And then I pulled the lever and I was like, ha ha, Sherrod, you are. I'll take those glory points, please. But you know what? When it comes to the tone of the game, it's apparent that the team has been focusing on accessibility with this title. As rules such as fainting players not ruining the encounter for everyone with an instant game over, or abilities that let you distract enemies to buy yourself some time, or indeed lure them into traps, make for a much more forgiving experience than Dark Souls or Resident Evil 2 provided. Now that's not to say that it's a complete walk in the park all the way through, especially in the semi-cooperative mode, but it's definitely a title that is focused on accessibility and fun over basically overwhelming and punishing odds. I also adore how the team has taken their brilliant deck AI mechanic and now expanded it by having creatures ask a question at the beginning of their activation, the response to which will then dictate what movements or attacks they take. This creates moments where weaker game will group together for safety and might even mean the difference between a hunter taking a devastating ranged attack or a relatively weaker close combat blow. Knowing how these creatures work will make it easier for you to lure them into traps and take them down. Plus, as the fact that they are machines, you can even target specific components on each of their bodies to disable their special moves or even entire attacks. And trust me, when some of them can do upwards of like 6 to 8 damage a blow, you're gonna want to be able to limit that. It all plays into this overarching feeling of stalking, setting traps, and then emerging from the long grass to take down prey in one fluid movement. The dynamic between hunters can make for some brilliant moments as well, where you'll knock an enemy towards another hunter to finish it off, or if you're playing to win, you'll set traps around enemies that other players are dealing with so that you end up stealing a kill and that sweet, sweet glory. Yet while I had a lot of fun with this game, there are a few critiques that I need to level at this beast. For starters, the semi-cooperative focus, which simply might not be for everyone. I mean, it's arguably much more fun to group together and take down big beasties in the full co-op mode than it is in the semi-cooperative one with you stabbing each other in the back. Now, if your group is into take that and liked betrayer elements of games, then this probably will be for you. But for the most part, if you're looking to just group together and work together fully, then you kind of will be giving this mode a miss, which also leads me into my next problem, which is that when you play full co-op mode, it's really, really easy. It's admittedly still an absolute blast, it's just that hunters become so overpowered by the end of the experience that working together to take down big game was a rather simple affair. Now, don't get me wrong, it is still a lot of fun, but it will probably need some house rules or homebrew stuff to make this feel like a real challenge. I also found through group play that certain actions really get left by the wayside come the close of the tracking sections, with the likes of Distract rarely being used when some builds of Hunter can actually just one-shot creatures. And the same can be said for targeting components. If you can one-shot a creature, why would you want to target that? Now, sure, there is a few classes that reward you with extra salvage for doing so, but if you're at that state in the game, you're just going to ignore that and just take down the enemy as quickly as possible. And I think that my only other thought would be that I wish that the core experience came with more big trophies to take down at the end, because in this experience, you only actually get one big game hunt encounter at the very end, which means that no matter what bits you're playing through in the lead up to it, you'll always face off against the same bigger enemies come the close of it. However, with the expansions available for the game, it does mean that you can round out your experiences as you choose, but maybe I just wish that there was another one in there to give you a little bit of variance. But overall, I really enjoyed my time with this game, especially the surprisingly deep customization and mini narratives that you can create between the encounters. I loved what they've done here with the first and last place having like a big impact on how the game shapes, and I really enjoyed trying out the different hunters, their different mechanics, because they all feel completely unique. And especially when you're playing in a group or playing playing solo, that can have a huge impact on how the game is shaped. So that's always good. I mean, like I said before, it might not be for everyone. If you don't like feel bad vibes by saying, hey, look, here's a card that's going to screw you over, then it might not work in your group. And the cooperative mode, while still being an absolute blast, maybe is a tad too easy and needs a bit of tweaking there. But if you're looking for a light skirmish game that does right by the IP and looks really great as well, then you can't really go wrong, can you? 
because the brilliantly executed mechanics and liquid smooth gameplay create a really engaging experience. And those are my thoughts on the Horizon Zero Dawn board game. I hope that you enjoyed that and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. And if you've already played or picked up a copy of this for yourself, let me know how you're getting on with it because I'd love to hear your opinions. If you want to keep in touch with more stuff like this, then you can follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero or you can follow Live and Let's Dice on Lal's tweet over on Twitter as well. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, my friends, and I'll see you soon. Bye.